Hey people, I'm Deep Rock and Puppet and welcome back to my drawing tutorials. We're going to be drawing this exact image today, it's a samurai skull and a namakumbi, or a severed head. Now I'm going to start off with a samurai skull, I'm going to get a big circle to build off the uh, face off. A curved line coming down with a rectangle just on the base of it, that's going to create the upper part of his jaw. Create the lower part of his jaw here, going to get a box shape, little shape to the side curving up. On top of that first box shape, I'm going to do another box shape with a smaller tip to create the nose. You have the eyes on either side of it, make sure the eyes on the right hand side is a little bit smaller because of the positioning it would appear a little bit smaller than the other side does. Two curves on either side here, this is going to create a basis where his cheeks are going to be. So a bit of cheekbone on the sides. This long rectangle is going to be the base of the helmet, so the very bottom of the helmet part. I like to have overlapping the eye a little bit. This is going to be his big emblem on top, so I'm going to make one side shorter than the other one because I want to look a bit broken. You know, he's a skull samurai, I don't want him looking like brand new. A big curve going well over, the, well over that circle because it's going to be the top part of his helmet. You know, you want to make sure it goes well over that so it fits right. Two curved rectangles on either side to create the overlaps. And two big boxes on the sides to create the side of the helmet like that. It's a real kind of simple build up sort of shape wise, you know, but at the minute you just build up the shapes first and then refine detail afterwards. You know, if everything's not in the right spot, it won't look right. So start with the shapes. Now the number can be faced, it's going to be the circle with this big over on the bottom bit. And draw a line halfway through that and just curve it down the side like so. It's going to give us positioning for where the eyes now, mouth and everything goes. Halfway through that bottom half, create another line. And then halfway through that, create another line. We're going to draw these lines around the outside. It's going to make like the scarf that's going around his neck. You know, just throw some random lines around there and it kind of make, make it look right. Divide that middle line into five sections. And create the eyes. So the eyes are going to be on the first one and the third one. Now it's going to be two curves going over side, creating a little bit of space in between and a bit of a curve over the top and then another curve going the other way just to create like a bit of a fold in the top part of the eye the nose is going to curve down, loop around and curve around like so to create a nostril and that's going to be on that middle line we've done on that bottom line is where the mouth's going to be so we're going to bring this curved line like this and then bring detailing over the top so create a lip and some teeth like this now the idea here is he's biting his bottom lip a few curved lines coming down just to kind of make it appear more like he's kind of sort of like pulling that bottom lip in his mouth Two curved lines down to create the uh, cheek shapes. And a bit of shade just underneath the eyes. I'm going to create each sort of jawline now. So we're going to curve a bit around the eye, create a loop. When you get to the chin, create a little fold so it bends around and then create another one. So it's got a little bit of a second chin. A bit of a curve around the top part of the eye and then we're going to add the eyebrows. So the eyebrows are going to be pointing quite high. And a couple of wee lines in between just to kind of give a bit of sort of structure to the middle part of his face. So it looks like he's a bit sort of like tensed. These two rectangles at the top, we're going to build up the basis of his hand. That's the uh, skeleton's hand. Four circles in the box and one circle to the left hand side. Just create some little loops down underneath to make the uh, fingertips. It's going to be bone, so you want to be a little bit, th a little bit thinner than normally would. The hairline's going to go like this. It's going to curve across the face as if the wind's kind of blowing it a bit towards the left angle. And you have the big, like, big overlap just to the back to create a back part of his hair as well. I'm going to bring in these three stripes going across, you know, to create a basis of what is going to be rope. You know, because the idea is the head's going to be tied up, you know, because it's a severed head, he's the way he sort of holds it. I'm going to come in with more detail now, so I'm going to raise it down a little bit and start coming in the black. So around the nose, you can see we've got more detail, a few little lines here and there, just to make it a bit more fun. You know, going over that top part of the helmet, just there, and bring out the secondary line, just create a little fold in it. And just on that middle part there, just create this rope going across. So all these little S curves just joining up to create that. Going over the emblem now, you can see I'm just making the tops a little bit more interesting. So a little bit of a drop just on the top and making the right hand side bit a bit cracked. The top of the helmet on the center bit there, you can see it's got this little top pot and you've got these curved lines coming up to it. Now this rope technique that I've done across the helmet, I'm going to use this across the side flaps and I'm going to use it in a few other locations as well. So it's a very important technique. It's a little S curve just bending across in the spaces. Now the side part of the helmet here, I'm going to divide this up into three sections and the lower section is always going to sit above the other one. I'm going to bring these four sort of shapes on each one of those. Just create a bit of rope, so that's sort of showing you how each plate is kind of held together as it goes up. Just going around his jawline now, so just create the teeth in there. I mean, you don't actually see teeth, but you're going to create the shape for where they would sit. So just kind of wiggle line across, and then loop up and down to create that. Two lines at the bottom, some like straight sort of soft shapes going down to create a bit of rope at the bottom of his chin. Going around his jawline just here, create like a bit of a wiggly line just on the bottom part where his teeth would be. And a bit of a curved line in the back where the rope would go. Some little flip lines on the other side just kind of tell how the other side of his helmet goes. And a bit of a curved line just on the top part of the helmet as well. Now we're going to start on the Namakumbi. So I bring on all these lines across his uh, scarf to begin with. 
Now they're quite jaggedy lines, so it'll come to hard points and hard curves. You know, don't too many sort of like uh, sort of like semicircle curves. You want it to be very hard to the point. Going over the facial detail, just going a bit more knee to this time. Going across those ropes, dividing them up, and then that same rope technique across those. Now it's all about kind of refining the detail. So we're just going over everything we've done and just making it a bit more neater and a bit more in show. So a little detail inside the ear, just kind of looping around, curving around. A little bit more on the fingertips, so it's a little bit of curves just on the top of the glove. And once you've got that done, you can sort of remove the old original, you know, sort of line work. I'm going to go over a nice big bulk pen now. So it's going to everything we've just done, just neat up again, you know, it's, it's just a process. You know, you start off sketching and then you refine it, refine it, refine it, and eventually you come in with nice line work with a solid pen and really define it. Especially with Japanese style, you want to be like nice and crisp. Now at this stage, you want to start refining it with little extra details. So I'm going to put some more lines in the face and little bits in the eyes, just some random lines throughout the skull, just kind of give it a bit more texture, so it just feels a bit more, you know, got a bit more into it. Some circles around the ropes on the side part of the helmet, and some straight lines curving up with a line just at the bottom and create a base bit. I'm going to have a different colour. Inside the flaps there, you can see I've got these box shapes, and each one of those box shapes I rotate each time, so you've got two straight ones, two side ones, and little box shaped lines in between are just a bit lighter. In the background, I've had this nice kind of smoke effect, you know, so it's got these wispy curved lines curving around with little line details in between each one of those. And once we've got that done, we can go into shading. So I'm going to start off with this helmet from the top, working my way down. So a bit of dark shade at the top, and just where it sits underneath, so in between the emblem and bottom bit, underneath the helmet on the skull, and a little bit on the sides. Underneath the jaw, just like so. Anywhere it kind of sits underneath, you want a bit of shade coming off. And don't be afraid to go dark, like under the helmet, on the side part there, you see coming down. Now we're just going to build up section by section, so a little bit on the side back of the helmet, inside the nose and the eyes. You know, if you look at sections are blacked out and the nose is quite dark as well. On the bottom part where the uh, gaps we left where the teeth would have been, a bit of shade coming down, and just underneath the cheekbone bit as well, you know, it gives a nice sense of 3D-ness to it as well. On top of this helmet, I've made this a bit a little bit lighter, and I can make the top part of the emblem a bit lighter as well. And I've basically got these diagonal lines coming through that top part to create this nice shine effect, and two through that top part, the front part of the helmet, to create a nice shine effect there as well. The back part of this helmet, really simple shade just coming across. You know, it's in the background, I kind of want to feel there, but I want something to be there. Now going to the Namakumbi, underneath the eyes and the eyebrows are going to black out, just like so. And just build it up little bit by little bit. So I'm going to start off with his nose, on the bottom bit I've got a little shade just on the tip of his nose, and a bit of triangle shape underneath it. On the sides of his cheeks, a bit of fade coming out, and just from the side cheekbone coming out as well. Now just find your lines, and you want to shade off the lines. So around the eyes, a bit of shadow from either side, a little highlight in the middle. You know, just keep building it up. Like here, I've got shadow underneath the rope because I want that rope to kind of feel a bit more in front. So just a very gentle shadow all around the outside of it. On his forehead here, and I've left a little highlight just on the side of it as well, just kind of get a little bit of shine. I'm just going to start cutting on his hair now. So I want it very dark at the back and dark at the front, just leaving a little highlight just through the middle bit. Nothing too much. You, know, you want a bit of a bit grey tone over the top. You know, it's, you want it all to be coloured in, just with little highlights just here and there. Nothing too crazy. Black in the background on the top part of the head, so just curving up, down, and then alternate on the back side as well. A bit of grey just over the top. And you can see it's all coming together now. Just putting a bit by bit inside the ear. So very dark inside the ear part, a little bit shut on the side. And then just in the background here, just behind all the smoke effect we've done. Just black from all the corners and just a little bit coming off it so it really stands out in front. You know, that's just really make everything pop and then appear in front. Bit of shadow on the hand, so the top part of his glove, black either side, and a bit of shadow has come up from the tip of the fingers. And now I'm going to come in with colour. Now you can choose colours you want, you know, I'm going to go very light, light blue on the top part of the emblem and the front bit, so it's got this kind of silvery tone. And then here in the uh, rope, I've got this alternating colour, so it's going to go from this dark blue to this lighter green sort of blue. And I really love that sort of, you know, selection of colours for rope, and I'm going to carry that the whole way through, except for the side part of the helmet, where it connects up on the plates. Top part of his helmet is going to be brown. And in his face, I'm going to do this dark kind of sort of caramel tone, and I'm going to come over it with a really nice light caramel tone over the top to really kind of bring it all out. You know, I want that sort of bony texture to it. You know, you can leave it white, but I think the bony texture looks so much nicer. Inside the eyes and nose, to make it appear shadowy, I'm going to make a like sort of purplish tone. So it's got a lavender sort of feel to it. And the side part of the helmet, and you've got brown in the background, red in the ropes, yellow in the little rings, and a bit like the same blue across the outside edges of it. You know, it's a real simple kind of build up, but it really kind of brings it through because it's got the brown from the top of the helmet, brown from the bottom, matches up. Now before I start doing his face, I know I want a background that's nice golden yellow, so I'm going to do that. And once I've got that done, I'll decide the colour of the face. So when it really faints, I'm going to have this sort of purple and blue tones just fading in from his face. 
this really nice kind of sort of like faint red just behind his ears and lower part of the lip. And once I've got it done, I can start working on his scarf. So his scarf's going to be like, you know, blood red. And it's going to come down. I'm going to leave a little white edge just around the edge parts of it like this. Just block it in, like no sort of shadow. I like this bold red to it, which makes it really stand out. And once I've got it done, I'm going to come in a blood effect. So blood around the neck, because he is a severed head, is in Amakumbi. I'm going to put some yellow in his eyes and a bit of blood splatter on the skull's face. And that's it, people. That is how you draw a skull samurai in Amakumbi. I hope you like it. I've got lots of other videos just like this. Got like a nice tiger samurai, got drag dragons and other sort of ones. So check my channel. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe. You know, it always helps. I'm the Broken Bucket people and I'll see you next time. Peace.